بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Continuing with our new series wherein we started last week to speak about Islamic morals, Islamic manners and we're going to be, as we mentioned, going through virtues and mannerisms and etiquettes in order for us to beautify ourselves and therefore to come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to be a better Muslim better Muslima so that we can function better in a Muslim society or in a Muslim household and to make the lives of those that are around us more positive and more beneficial inshallah so just before we start I'd like somebody to remind me of something that we mentioned last week pertaining to the virtues of studying good manners and good characteristics etc so what are one of the many virtues that we mentioned last week if somebody can mention something no problem, okay, I'll mention something. The Prophet Sallallahu as we remember, he said in the hadith, إِنَّمَا بُعِثْتُ لِأُتَمِّمَ مَكَارِمَ الْأَخْلَاقِ The Prophet Sallallahu said, Verily, I've only been sent to perfect good morals and good characteristics. So that shows us the importance of learning about good manners and good characteristics in Islam because the Prophet is saying in the hadith that this is one of his main objectives of his mission is to perfect good morals and good characteristics so it's imperative that we learn about them it's imperative that we think deeply about them so that we can internalize them and then try to enact upon them as much as we can because the more we perfect our character the more we come close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the more beloved we are to him because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to be in this dunya living upon the best of ways which is Islam in accordance to what the Prophet ﷺ came with and the Prophet ﷺ was one who had great amazing character and we need to try to emulate that as much as we can so anyway what we're taking today is known as Al-Ihsan Al-Ihsan what we're taking is Al-Ihsan so the meaning of Ihsan Lughatan linguistically Al-Ihsan Diddu Al-Isa'ati Ihsan is the opposite to Isa'ati Ihsan is the opposite to Isa'ati Isa'a Isa'a is wrongdoing evil and everything which is bad that is Isa'a wrongdoing, injustice, evil these kind of meanings so Ihsan, what we're studying today is the complete opposite to that Okay. so its meaning, its technical meaning is as follows Ma'na is Al-Ihsan istilahan so the technical meaning of what we're studying today, Ihsan, after having just looked at the linguistic meaning quickly, it has two categories that it falls into technically in the Sharia. First of them, first of them is this Ihsan fi ibadatil khaliq, is Ihsan pertaining to the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like it came in the hadith of Jibreel, when the Prophet sallallahu was asked, Mal Ihsan, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa tell me about what is Ihsan. He said, Ta'bud Allah ka'annaka tarahu His ihsan is that you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as though you are witnessing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala فَإِن لَمْ تَكُنْ تَرَاهُ فَإِنَّهُ يَرَاكُ And if it's the case and it's the reality that you cannot witness Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with your eyes then know for sure that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching you and observing you and all knowing of what you are doing so that is Ihsan when it comes to worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you worship him to the extent subhanahu wa ta'ala as though you are cognizant of him you are aware of him in each place and each time to the extent as though you see him everywhere subhanahu wa ta'ala now be careful with my words there's no way you can see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this world, in this life however you can see his signs you can be reminded with his dhikr you see his Quran so what it means is that you are fully aware of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in each state that you are in in each action that you are undertaking in each word that you are saying you are thinking and aware is this pleasing to Allah is this displeasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you have awareness of Allah's creation his majesty his majestic things that he has created you have awareness of the sharia of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so ihsan with regards to the worship of Allah is that you worship Allah to an extent that you see him the spiritual seeing of Allah which are not with the eyes not with the physical eyes because that is going to be in the hereafter and it also has the meaning pertaining to Allah that you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bil jidd fi qiyamin huquq Allah ta'ala so you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with as much effort as you possibly can when it comes to fulfilling the obligations that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put upon you 
ala wajhin nusah wa takmil laha with sincerity and you want to do the actions in the most perfect of ways so all of these meanings are from within the meanings of the word ihsan the topic that we are taking today pertaining to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so we can summarize it that you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as though you see him and you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the best of your ability exerting the maximum effort that you can in every act of worship regarding Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so this requires you to have muraqaba of Allah as well, knowing that Allah is always there knowing that Allah deserves to be loved and worshipped in the highest and most complete of manners and uh, meanings of that sort and knowing that Allah is all watching and all knowing when a person tries hard to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they exert their efforts their ihsan with regards to Allah as well will increase meaning that their awareness and their heart and soul being filled with the awareness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will increase as mentioned in the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Bukhari where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says it's a hadith al-Qudsi the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said Ma man aada li waliyan faqad aadhantuhum bil harb whoever harms a wali of mine a wali is a close friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right faqad aadhantuhum bil harb then I have declared war upon this person that is harming this close friend of mine this close wali of mine may Allah make us from them then the Prophet said in this hadith وَمَا تَقَرَّبَ إِلَيَّ عَبْدِي بِشَيْءٍ أَحَبُّ إِلَيَّ مِمَّ افْتَرَدْتُ عَلَيْهِ that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that my slave my servant doesn't come close to me except with those things which I have made obligatory upon them so the more you fulfill the obligations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a perfect way in the way that is the best of your ability the closer you come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the hadith continued and he said وَمَا يَزَالُ عَبْدِي يَتَقَرَّبُ إِلَيَّ بِالنَّوَافِلْ حَتَّى أُحِبَّهُ and my slave continues to do acts of worship which are above and beyond the obligatory acts of worship he or she does the supererogatory acts of worship the nafil acts of worship the sunnah acts of worship and they continue to come close to me through those acts of worship the extra acts of worship حَتَّى until until he said حتى أحبه until I love this person Allah says فإذا أحببته كنت سمعه الذي يسمع به and then when I love this person I become his or her hearing by which they hear with وبصره الذي يبصر به and the sight by which this person sees ويبده التي يبتش بها and it's and the person's hand by which they touch and they move their hands ورجله التي يمشي بها and the feet by which they walk وَلَئِنْ سَأَلَنِي لَأُعْطِيَنَّهُ وَلَئِنْ اسْتَعَاذَنِي لَأُعِيذَنَّهُ and then if this person having reached this stage of worship was to ask me something I would give that person whatever they wanted and if they were to seek refuge in me I would protect them from that which they were seeking refuge from so the hadith it started by saying that we should worship Allah with the obligatory actions to the best of our ability and then you continue doing the sunnah and the nawafil the extra actions until you come to a state that Allah loves you and if Allah loves you he becomes the, the hearing by which you hear meaning that you are only going to hear those things which are pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the sight by which you see you'll only see those things which are pleasing to Allah and the hand by which your hands move meaning your hands will only move to that which is pleasing to Allah and the feet by which you walk your feet will only take you to places wherein you are pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala why? because you've reached a state of worship a state of awareness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you are truly connected to Allah and He is the most that you think about in your life He is the thing that you always think about before doing an action before saying a statement before making even a move so Allah is always on your mind in your thoughts in your actions etc etc so you reach a very high level of ihsan pertaining to the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is what we should always aim for so that was the first of the definition of the word ihsan pertaining to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right and then there's a second part of this word ihsan which is pertaining to the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala pertaining to the rest of mankind and his animals etc وَإِحْسَانٌ فِي حَقُوقِ الْخَلْقِ Ihsan pertaining to the rights of the creation. And that is to give from yourself any benefit that you can give to any of the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Of course, first and foremost being your parents and then your family and the believers and then the rest of mankind in general and anything else which is living with us on the earth. The Muslim, the believer, al mu'min, wal mu'mina, they try their best to spread good with their, wherever they are. 
whether it's good to their neighbors, good to their parents, good to their children, good to their work colleagues, good to the person on the street, good to the animals wherever they see them. They're always aware that this creation belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And for me to actualize ihsan, I have to do good to them as much as I can. So this is something which at times is obligatory pertaining to who you are doing ihsan to, like the parents and the neighbors, it's obligatory, and the relatives, it's obligatory. And then it's mustahab, it's recommended above and beyond that to be good to whoever you come into contact with, right? And to leave them with a good positive interaction of yourself. At-targhibu fil ihsan, the recommendations of the Quran and Sunnah for us to have ihsan. Awwalan fil Quran al kareem first and foremost in the glorious Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Nahl, إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَعْمُرُ بِالْعَدْلِ وَالْإِحْسَانِ وَإِتَاءِ ذِي الْقُرْبَى That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He commands that we give justice and ihsan, this goodness, all types of goodness, وَإِتَاءِ ذِي الْقُرْبَى And we give to the relatives, the close relatives, وَيَنْهَا عَنِ الْفَحْشَاءِ وَالْمُنْكَرِ وَالْبَغِي And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forbids us from falling into frivolous deeds, to deeds of evil nature and evil in general, and transgressions. يَعِذُكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَذَكَّرُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us and warns us in the hope that we may take a remembrance. So the verse is saying that Allah is commanding us to be just and to give ihsan to our relatives and to those who are close to us. Imam Sa'di, rahimahullah ta'ala, in his tafsir, he said, Al-Ihsan fadilatul mustahabun. Ihsan is a virtue that is highly recommended. وَذَلِكَ كَنَفْئِ النَّاسِ بِالْمَالِ وَالْبَدْنِ وَالْعِلْمِ And that is like benefiting people, whether it's through your money, or whether it's through your body itself, that you use your body to help other people, or you spread knowledge that will help other people. وَغَيْرُ ذَلِكَ مِنْ أَنْوَاءِ النَّفْعِ حَتَّى إِنَّهُ يَدْخُلُ فِي الْإِحْسَانِ إِلَى الْحَيَوَانِ الْبَحِيمِ الْمَعْكُولِ وَغَيْرِهِ Even the ihsan will extend to treating not only people, but also treating the bahaim, treating the animals which are on the earth. That's how the Muslim has to be. The Muslim has to be careful how they interact with the creation in general and in specific. So also the animals have to be treated carefully. Look in the hadith of Abi Dawood, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the best of examples for Ihsan. دَخَلَ حَائِتًا لِرَجُلٍ مِنَ الْأَنصَارِ The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam entered upon, entered upon a garden from one of the people that belonged to the tribe of the Ansar. فَإِذَا جَمْنٌ فَلَمَّا رَأَى النَّبِي صلى الله عليه وسلم. So as he entered, the Prophet وسلم, saw a camel. And the camel, when it saw the Prophet وسلم, حَنَّ وَذَرَفَتْ عَيْنَاهُ The camel, it came to the Prophet وسلم, in a way of crying, in a way of groaning, of sadness. And its eyes started to cry when it saw the Prophet وسلم. فَأَتَاهُ النَّبِي صلى الله عليه وسلم, فَمَسَحَ ذِفْرَاهُ So the Prophet وسلم, came to this camel, he didn't ignore it. Being the busy statesman that he was, being the busy leader that he was, being the prophet that had to guide the whole of humanity to mankind, so busy, every second of his life was filled with struggles and striving, but he didn't ignore the camel. He saw that the camel was in need, so he came to the camel and he wiped the camel near its ears on its head. Fasakata, and then the camel calmed down and it became quiet. فَقَالَ مَنْ رَبُّ حَادِ الْجَمَلِ The Prophet ﷺ said, Who is the owner of this camel? لِمَنْ حَادِ الْجَمَلِ To who does it belong? فَجَاءَ فَتَى مِنَ الْأَنصَارِ Then a person, a youth, came from the Ansar. فَقَالَ لِي يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ It belongs to me, O Messenger of Allah. فَقَالَ أَفَلَا تَتَّقِ اللَّهَ فِي حَادِ الْبَحِيمَةِ اللَّتِي مَلَكَكَ اللَّهُ إِيَّاهَا Won't you fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in regards to your interaction with this animal that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you ownership over? فَإِنَّهُ شَكَ إِلَيَّ For verily this animal, this camel, complained to me, أَنَّكَ تُجِيْءُهُ وَتُدْئِبُهُ That verily you cause it to be hungry and leave it without being fed for long periods of time and you overwork it. So the Prophet ﷺ gave us the clearest and the brightest and the most magnificent of examples of how to interact with human beings and even how to interact with animals. See how the Prophet ﷺ, though he's super busy, though he has so many huge and important matters on his, on his mind, but he didn't miss out the opportunity of dealing with this camel in the best of manners possible. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Excuse me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, in Surah Al-Baqarah, with أَخَذْنَا مِيثَاقَ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ لَا تَعْبُدُونَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ When we took the covenant from the tribes of Israel that they should not worship, that you do not worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانَ And that you do ihsan to your parents. وَذِلْقُرْبَةِ And to your relatives. 
وَالْيَتَامَى وَالْمَسَاكِينَ and to the orphans and to the poor وَقُولُوا لِلنَّاسِ حُسْنَ and you say to the people that which is good طيب meaning أي أحسنوا بالوالدين إحسانا mean always be good to your parents with إحسان striving to do as much good as you can for your parents may Allah allow us to do that it's a very difficult thing to be good to your parents who when they become old at times they can be very difficult to deal with but the rewards for being dutiful to your parents are immense so we should strive to have ihsan towards our parents and this encompasses every type of ihsan whether it be ihsan of, of, of our limbs or whether it be ihsan of our speech and in the verse that we just mentioned there is a command that you shouldn't do wrong to your parents so here's a question for you that wasn't explicitly mentioned in the in the verse so how are the ulama saying that from the verse that we just took there is an evidence that we shouldn't do wrong to our parents would anybody like to answer so in the verse we were just taking where it said basically do good to your parents give ihsan to your parents and also to your relatives so in this verse the ulama say that there is a there is a command that you shouldn't do bad to your parents but i'm saying to you we didn't read this in the verse it didn't say don't do bad to your parents rather it said do good to your parents so where do we take from this verse that you should not do bad to your parents how can we understand what the ulama is saying the command yeah so the command is to do good but where is it saying that you shouldn't do bad it's just a logical thing because they say that a command to do something also has the command within it not to do the opposite of that so if we're commanded to do good to our parents then obviously we're commanded not to do bad to our parents just keeping us interactive inshallah and then, the, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after telling us that we should do ihsan to our parents and to our relatives, then Allah also tells us that we have to do ihsan to the rest of the creation. وَقُولُوا لِلنَّاسِ husna, And say to the people husna, that which is from ihsan. Say to them speech which is full of ihsan. Do good actions in terms of your speech towards them. طيب, and your speech should be full of positivity. Your speech should make people happy. You should be smiling when you speak to them, etc., etc., etc. So, the amazing thing about this verse, وَقُولُوا لِلنَّاسِ husna, is that not everybody has money to spend on other people, whereby they can take care of them by doing good through their money. Not everybody has the strength of body to take care of other people, whereby they can use their body, the strength of their body, to help other people carry their shopping, etc., to build their houses for them, etc. Not everybody has that. But everybody... And not everybody has time to help other people because they're so busy, maybe. But everybody has the ability to say a good word. Anybody that you interact with, you have the ability to say a good word to them that can change their lives, that can give them positivity, that can give them happiness, that can melt their hearts. If you took enough time and enough empathy to understand where the person is coming from, you can say a good word and you can melt the hearts of the believers that you are interacting with rather than harming them, rather than pushing them away rather than making them feel some kind of pain after having interacted with you. Always make sure that you have ihsan, not only in your actions, or in your wealth, or in your body, but especially in your tongue. Because verily, this can bring you amazing matters. Look in the hadith in Bukhari. The Prophet ﷺ said, the hadith of Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, the Prophet ﷺ said, إِنَّ الْعَبْدِ لَا يَتَّكَلَّمُوا بِكَلِمَةٍ مِنْ رِضْوَانِ اللَّهِ لَا يُلْقِي لَهَا بَالِ يَرْفَعُهُ اللَّهُ بِهَا دَرَجَاتٍ that, Allah, that the Prophet ﷺ said that verily a slave of Allah speaks a word and he or she doesn't pay much attention to that word that is coming out of their mouth. However, this word is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and due to it, Allah raises this person high ranks in Jannah and in this dunya. وَإِنَّ الْعَبْدَ لَا يَتَكَلَّمُ بِكَلِمَةٍ مِنْ سَخْطِ اللَّهِ لَا يُلْقِي لَهَا بَالِ يَهْوِي بِهَا فِي جَهَنَّمِ And also on the opposite spectrum, a person a slave of Allah can say a word not paying much attention to it. However, this word can throw them deep into the hellfire due to how it anchored Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So our words have huge consequences, not only in terms of the rewards that they bring for us or the punishment that they bring, but rather the effect that it can have on a person. As I said to you, 
Al-Muslim man salim al-Muslimun min lisanihi wal yadihi. The Prophet Sallallahu said that the true believer, a believer, a Muslim, is the one that keeps other people safe from the harm of his tongue and his hand. So whenever we interact with people, it has to be with ihsan. We have to ensure that we are leaving them in a positive way. And if we disturb them, if we upset them, we should rush to them quickly to try to rectify it as quick as possible. Tayyib, why do ihsan to others? Obviously, we've looked at some verses and some ahadith, but more information. Why do ihsan to others? Why interact in a way of ihsan? In the hadith in Sahih Muslim, the Prophet said, it's a long hadith, but the part of the hadith that we'll choose, the Prophet said, Wallahu fi awni al-abd, ma dam al-abd fi awni akhi. Allah is in the service and in the help and in the aid of a servant as long as that servant is helping and aiding other slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wow. Every time you are aiding somebody else, it's coming back to you because Allah is going to aid you in like. Subhanallah. So we should, in fact, we should be going out of our doors searching for people that we can give ihsan to, looking for people that we can help. Why? Because we want the ihsan to come back to us from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need Allah's help more than we want Allah or need or want anybody else's help on this dunya, right? So the way to get it, one of the ways to get it is to help the slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As mentioned in the hadith in Sahih Muslim that we just took. وَمَنْ كَانَ طَرِيقَةُ الْإِحْسَانِ And whoever's way in living is ihsan, أَحْسَنَ اللَّهُ جَزَاءُهُ Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give ihsan in the reward for that person. Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Rahman, هَلْ جَزَاءُ الْإِحْسَانِ إِلَّا الْإِحْسَانِ Is it not the case that the reward of ihsan is but another ihsan? So every time you do good to people, good comes back to you and more door, uh, doors open for you to do further good so that you can get further reward. So not only is Allah subhanahu wa, subhanahu wa ta'ala going to help us through us doing ihsan to people, but also more doors of good will be open for us and reward is immense, immensely multiplied for us. So the next time our souls whisper to us that look, it's too difficult, you're too busy, you don't have the money, you don't have the time, uh, you're in a bad mood, you know, oh, that person deserves for you to treat them in a bad manner. Strive against yourself to try to do ihsan because look at the amount of huge rewards that you are getting. You are in the protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah azza wa jal is going to do for you as you do to others. In Surah Al-Qasas, in the verse, وَأَحْسِنْ كَمَا أَحْسَنَ اللَّهُ إِلَيْكَ And do ihsan as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has done ihsan to you. Imam Shawkani, he said, أَحْسِنْ إِلَىٰ إِبَادِ اللَّهِ كَمَا أَحْسَنَ اللَّهِ إِلَيْكَ بِمَا أَنْأَمَ بِهِ عَلَيْكَ مِنْ نَعْمِ الدُّنْيَا That like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you so much good and given you so much ihsan, then you should in return do ihsan to the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You want Allah to give you ihsan, yet you are not giving ihsan to the creation. You want Allah to be nice to you, however you're not being nice to the creation of Allah azza wa jal, it doesn't make sense. Be nice to the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, give them ihsan, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to give ihsan to you in return, right? So if we want to be, if we want to receive that from Allah azza then we have to ensure that our interactions with people are full of ihsan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran in Surah Al-A'raf, إِنَّ رَحْمَةَ اللَّهِ قَرِيبٌ مِّنَ الْمُحْسِنِينَ That verily the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is close to those who are muhsineen, close to those who do ihsan. So next time you're doing something for somebody or you have the opportunity to, to do good and it's difficult for you, don't worry. Remind yourself that not only you are going to get good in return from Allah and service from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but look at this verse, you're going to get mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The mercy of Allah Azzawajal is close to those who do good to other people. So this should spur us on, right? If you truly want to be happy in life, we do good to others and then goodness comes back to us in multifold, in many ways. You speak to people that spend time in charity projects or spend time, you know, helping somebody who's sick. You see them to be the happiest of people. You see them, you see them to have the most tranquility and the most internal joy. Why is that? It's because that is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives the person that does ihsan to other people. هَلْ جَزَاءُ الْإِحْسَانِ إِلَّا الْإِحْسَانِ As we said, is not the reward of doing ihsan except that the person gains more ihsan. Ihsan in their soul, ihsan in their whole being, ihsan in their life, etc, etc. طيب, how does a person know that they are muhsin? How does a person know that they are somebody who has ihsan? In the hadith narrated by collected by Imam Ibn Majah in Imam Ahmad, narrated by Abdullah ibn Masood in Radiallahu Anhu, قال, 
قال رجل رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم a person said to the, person, to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم كيف لي أن أعلم إذا أحسنت وإذا أسأت how do I know O Messenger of Allah if I have done good or if I have done wrong قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم إذا سمعت جيرانك يقولون if you hear your neighbor saying about you أن قد أحسنت فقد أحسنت that you have done good you have done إحسان then you have done إحسان meaning that if they are praising you whether directly to you or to other people you know sometimes when we do good somebody comes and tells us that oh so and so was so happy that you did the act for them وَإِذَا سَمِعْتَهُمْ يَقُولُونَ قَدْ أَسَأْتَ فَقَدْ أَسَأْتَ and if you hear your neighbors saying that you have done evil then you have done evil so that's one of the ways of knowing right you know many a times we're in a kind of delusion we're self-deluded often we're so good oh I'm such an amazing character I'm always doing good to people and we we that's not our real, reality at times the way to know your reality is to ask the people or to listen carefully to the people that you are always interacting with. How do they find you? Do they find that they can come to you? Uh, do they find that they are safe around you? They, do they like to be around you? Do they leave your gatherings uplifted and improved, their situations improved? Or is the opposite, that they, when they interact with you, all they find is negativity and harm? Ask your family members. If you truly want to know the reality of your situation, tell them, be brave and tell me what is my reality? What are my good points or what are my weak points? And if your weak points are much more than you, if your bad points are much more than your good points, then you know that you have a lot of ihsan to work on before you become a muhsin. Taib, fawaid al ihsan, some more benefits of ihsan. Number one, pertaining to society at large. Imagine a society where every believer is racing to fulfill the needs of another believer. Why are they racing to do that? Because they want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be with them. They want to be close to Allah azawajal. They want the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They want the aid and the protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So these people are running around in society whenever they find the opportunity. Oh, so and so is sick? Okay, I'm going to go and cook for them. So and so is sick? I'm going to visit them. I'm going to take them to their appointment. So and so needs money? I've got the ability to help them. I help them. So-and-so needs a good word, a kind word to uplift them from their sadness. I'm going to do that for them. I'm going to take them out, give them a good time. So if the whole community was like that, imagine the type of society that we would be living in. People would be flocking to Islam if they saw this behavior from us, rather than hating each other and putting each other down. However, having said that, that we should be racing to do good for one another, we should not be those people, sadly we find them in the community, that they like to rely upon other people. They have this expectancy that everybody should be doing good to me and they themselves are not giving good back. Sadly, you have people like that and they make the situation very difficult because people know that this person doesn't really need help. This person can help themselves if they wanted to. However, they're always asking, they're always relying on people's aid and help and charity, etc. That just spoils the situation. Rather, we want to go out and help people that truly need the help and that will increase the beauty of the society. طيب, a second benefit. المحسن يكون في معية الله عز وجل ومن كان مع ومن كان الله معه فإنه لا يخاف بأسا ولا رهقا. That the muhsin, the person who has ihsan, a do-gooder, they are with the in the ma'iyya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are in a special relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, close to the mercy and protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So whoever is, is with Allah in this special way, then they don't fear any difficult situation in life. They don't fear that their life will go wrong. Rather, Allah will guide them aright and make sure that they live a righteous life. Thirdly, الإحسان في إبادة الخالق يمنع عن المعاصي. The third benefit of Ihsan is that when we have Ihsan in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it prevents us from doing wrong. It prevents us from falling into sin. How? Well, we described Ihsan pertaining to Allah, that you worship Allah to the best of your ability. You always endeavor to put Allah first in every action that you do. You always endeavor to have as much knowledge as you can regarding and relating to Allah and the rules and regulations pertaining of the Sharia. So when your mind is, doc, uh, is made in this way and your soul is developed in this way that you always rush to do acts of worship to the best of your ability, you always race other people to do the act of worship before they do it, you always want to learn more about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You always want to spend more time with the Quran and the dhikr of Allah azza You always want to be involved in the charity projects, in the dawah projects. Then how is it going to be that shaitan is going to come to you and whisper to you very easily to fall into sin? 
Rather, the ones that our shaitan gets to fall into sins easily are the ones that are away from the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Allah says, وَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِي فَإِنَّهُ فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً ضَنْقَ ضَنْكَ That whoever turns away from my remembrance, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, then that person has a restricted life. A life not full of relaxation and enjoyment. Why? Because that person is always being influenced by shaitan and every time they, they, they do wrong, and they harm their souls, they feel more and more tight within their chest. They don't feel that special relaxation, that special enjoyment of Iman because they are away from the remembrance and the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the more that you have Ihsan in your worship, the less shaitan is able to take you to the disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The next benefit of Ihsan, Al-Ihsan ila nasi sababun min asbab al inshirah al-sadr that when you give in ihsan to the creation, to other people, then that's one of the greatest ways of you having in shirah, in shirah as-sadr, to having what is known as like an open chest, meaning you're always calm, you're always relaxed, you always have a, a, a sense of self-fulfillment, self-value, you always have that taste of sweetness of iman, even if your wealth is low, you still have that good feeling, why? Because you're helping other people. So when you help other people for the true sake of Allah Azawajal, not because you want reward from people, not because you want to be thanked, not because you want to be somebody who's known by the community for helping, rather you do it only for the sake of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, then you're going to find an experience of joy in your heart which no other joy can, can, can compare to. Why? Because you did all this for the sake of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. You're helping the creation to please Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And that's an amazing thing actually. If you can wire your mind to not think about the reward and to only think about what Allah to not think about the reward of the people and to only think of the reward of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then nothing can hold you back from doing good and that's the beautiful thing about ikhlas al-ikhlas alla tatlubu shahidan ala amlika ghayrullah wa la mujaziyan siwa Allah ikhlas sincerity is that you don't seek for a witness to your action other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and nobody to reward you, reward you for your action other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if that is your situation, you're going to be going forth and doing good whether people thank you or they don't thank you. Whether people try and get in your way or they don't try and get in your way, right? Because some of us, sadly, we only do good when people thank us. We only do good when we know that there's a benefit in it for us. No, the true muhsin, the true person that spreads ihsan and that experiences the joy in their life, they do it only because they are going to be ple uh, rewarded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And also a fifth one that we'll end with from the benefits of Ihsan is Itfa Narul Hasid Wal Baghi Wal Mu'di Bil Ihsan ilayhi. That the ones who are trying to do the ones who are jealous about you, right? They have jealousy towards you, the ones that have hatred towards you, the ones that try to harm you. When you do Ihsan to them, when you repel what they're doing with Ihsan, they're bringing evil to you, but you only bring back Ihsan towards them. فَكُلَّمَا إِزْدَادَ أَذَنْ وَشَرًا وَبَغْيًا وَحَسَدًا إِزْدَدْتَ إِلَيْهِ إِحْسَانًا وَلَهُ نَصِيحًا وَعَلَيْهِ شَفَقَةً وَمَا نَعْمْ So as I said that all these things, whenever they try to bring harm to you, you repel it with that which is better in your actions. What happens then? You fall under the verse in, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Qur'an وَلَا تَسْتَوِ الْحَسَنَةُ وَلَا السَّيِّئَةُ Verily the evil deed and the good deed can never be equal. إدفع بالتي هي أحسن. Repel that which is evil with that which is better. فَإِذَا الَّذِي بَيْنَكَ وَبَيْنَهُ عَدَاوَةٌ كَأَنَّهُ وَلْيُونَ حَمِيمٌ So in that situation, when you're always repelling the evil with that which is better, then you will find that this person who had enmity towards you will soon end up being a very close friend of yours. وَمَا يُلَقَّاهَا إِلَّا الَّذِينَ صَبَرُوا And the people who act in this way, they cannot do it unless they have patience. وَمَا يُلَقَّاهَا إِلَّا ذُو حَظٍ عَظِيمٌ And the people cannot do it behave in this manner unless they have a huge amount of patience Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying in Surah Al-Fusilat so every time people do harm towards us if they're jealous of us they try to harm us with their speech and their actions to the best of our ability we should repel with good actions the only time we are strong and put them under our fists so to speak is in the time of jihad when we make jihad, that is when we are strong and that is when we are fearless and that is when we don't show mercy until we win the battle on the battlefield. But in terms of living societies and dealing with people that are harming us, we deal with them in the best of manners as much as possible. Until it becomes physical harm, then you're allowed to defend yourself. We shouldn't walk around being meek and weak. No, 
you can defend yourself but it should, you should always try your best that it never gets to that situation you always try your best to repel evil with good speech and good actions and by doing so more than often more than often you will find that you have melted the heart of the person if they had an ounce an atom's ounce of an sorry an atom's weight of good in their hearts whether they're muslim or non-muslim then they will change their behavior towards you right and so this is the way to go and not for us to be repelling with that with repelling with evil Taib, one or two examples of ihsan from the prophet sallallahu before we conclude Ihsan pertaining to worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the hadith which is collected by Bukhari and Muslim is Muttafaqun Ali, Ummul Mu'minin Aisha radiallahu anha, the mother of the believers Aisha radiallahu anha, she said about the Prophet sallallahu kana yaqumu min al-layl hatta yattaf hatta tattafattara qadamahu, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa would stand up in the night prayer until his feet would start to crack and become swollen due to the length of the prayer of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa in the night prayer. So Aisha radiallahu anha, she said, Ya Rasulullah, lima tasna' hada? O Messenger of Allah, why are you doing this to yourself? You know, your feet are swelling, your feet are cracking. Why are you doing this? وَقَدْ غَفَرَ اللَّهُ لَكَ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ ذَنْبِكَ وَمَا تَأَخَرَ Knowing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forgiven for you any past mistakes or any future mistakes. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said these words that should be written in gold. He said, أَفَلَا أَكُونُ عَبْدًا shakura." Should I not then in that situation be a grateful slave to Allah who has forgiven my past sins and forgiven my future mistakes? Meaning that if Allah has done this ihsan to me, shouldn't I return the ihsan to Allah by exerting the, the most effort that I can do in worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? The next narration, narration of Anas ibn Malik in Al-Adab al-Mufrad, that the Prophet sallallahu he used to mix with the youngsters, right? He used to mix with the youth. Anas ibn Malik, he said, I used to have a, 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 a حتى يقول لأخ لي صغير. I used to have a young brother called Umair. And this Umair used to have a sparrow, a little bird that he would play with, Umair, this boy. One day the Prophet sallam heard that this boy's sparrow had died. What did the Prophet sallam do? Did he laugh? The Prophet sallam went to him and he said, Ya Aba Umair. He gave him a kunya, he called him Ya Aba Umair. ما فعل النغير. What has the small bird done? Meaning that Prophet ﷺ is striking up conversation with this boy, talking to him about his little sparrow that passed away, that died. So here the Prophet ﷺ, the leader of the community, the, the statesman, the warrior, the one that has so much taking place, he found time to go to this youngster and to deal with the situation that the youngster was dealing with, which was the death of his sparrow, the death of his small bird, and showed Ihsan to this young boy in the most beautiful of ways. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to embody some of the traits that the Prophet had with regards to Ihsan, worshipping Allah to the best of our ability and exerting as much effort as we possibly can in seeking knowledge and worshipping Allah and then exerting as much effort as we possibly can in terms of interacting with people that are close to us, our relatives, interacting with people that we see on the streets, our friends or anybody that we may come across leaving a positive vibe after we have interacted with them leaving them to be interested in knowing more about Islam because they want to emulate the, the positive energy that we have this is how we're supposed to be if there was anything which was correct it was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala any mistakes and shortcomings were from myself and shaitan and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to increase us in knowledge and to increase us in practice of that knowledge. I mean, if you have any questions, then feel free, inshallah.